to say a word of good morning as we gather today. As always, I appreciate the energy that we have as we come together as a community. It's good to get together and to connect. As worship comes our way today and we're here, I, I point you to just a couple of announcements that you might be interested in. Uh, you'll notice that we do have a town hall all church meeting uh, this Wednesday night to discuss with Laura and Kevin some of the implications that might be pertinent to us as general conference, the special general conference happens next month. So it, this is a good uh, Wednesday night to come and listen and learn and uh, converse as we are church. Um, also, Fiesta Domingo is happening next Sunday, so an opportunity for us to provide a meal for those in need. So uh, if you want to volunteer for that, that is coming our way as well. Uh, those two to lift up. Are there other announcements we might need to hear today? Uh, if not, uh, may we be open to this special opportunity, uh, a great way to start our week. Sunday is the first day of the week, not Monday, but today we open our hearts to all that can be in the days ahead, uh, re uh, refreshing, renewal, um, community, uh, a good word, uh, love, incarnate. May we open our hearts to this season and this day as we worship together. Let us worship.
Good morning. Siblings of Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, God's spirit is poured out upon water. Water poured over and immersing us, water that flows freely for all who will receive it, water from the streams of God's saving, power, and justice, water that brings hope to all who thirst for righteousness, water that refreshes life, nurtures growth, and offers one another to renew our commitment to Christ, who calls us to righteousness and peace, the spirit who inspires and instructs us, and the creator who is making all things new. We come today to remember what it means that one greater than John the Baptist, greater than all of us who is also one who was born in Bethlehem, we come to remember what it means that he was baptized by John and revealed to be God's beloved Son. We come to remember our baptism, which proclaims that we are also beloved children of God. We come to worship. Please join me in the reading of the gospel. Our lesson today is from Luke chapter 3, verses uh, 15 through 17 and 21 through 22. This can be found on page 60 in your pew Bible. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal, but will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chafe he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and the voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. 
and with you I am well pleased. The word of God for all children of God, with whom God is well pleased. Thanks be to God. Let's see. Yeah, it works. Calling the children up. Have you guys ever seen like a train wreck happening right in front of you? It's okay. We're, we're, we're holding on. So I have a question for you guys. Could you all, all close your eyes? Take a deep breath. You're in the Amazon. And it's misty. There's howler monkeys. And you're in a canoe. And it's mid-1860 something. And you hear people talking. You don't know the language. And you hear up ahead some rapids. You don't know how big they are. Your boat weighs 2,600 pounds. How do you feel in this moment? Do you feel scared? Do you feel worried? Uncertain. Okay, open your eyes and then shut them one more time. You're with your family, a significant other, someone who you love very much, and you're out on a peaceful lake and you're rowing a canoe and you maybe have a picnic. How do you feel there? Good, happy, content? Okay, thank you for playing along. So today during Sunday school, what did we make? Canoes. Canoes. They're all on the ground now. But we had some ingenious little canoes that came up. So what we talked about today was two people. The first story was, does anybody know what this story was from? It's a famous president, Theodore Roosevelt. He traveled down at this time. It was called the River of Doubt in the Amazon. And I have read this book, and I was inspired. I was also inspired by another gentleman. His name is Daniel Eccles. I don't know if you guys know him. No. And Daniel, one time, I overheard him talking about floating down a river. And I'm going to paraphrase to how I heard it. That whenever things get scary... What do we do? What do we want to do? Do we want to kind of panic? No. No. Well, that is good. Whenever we're in a canoe, what bad could happen, Emmett? Um, you could tip over. You could get trapped in rapids. Yeah, but what are some good things that could happen? Um, you can... Um, You can be with your family. You can, um, what was it? To be with your family. So what I learned from Daniel and from Teddy Roosevelt and what we learned today is that whenever things get tough, we may want to grip tight to our canoes. And we may not know what to do or where to go. But we can always trust who? God. When things go easy and we don't really feel like we may have to trust, who do we still want to trust? That's right. So thank you, Daniel and Teddy Roosevelt, for inspiring me and the children.
You ready to pray? Mm -hmm. Will you pray with us? Dear God, we should trust you forever. Help us go for our canoe. The water is dangerous sometimes. We should trust ourselves too. We will try to go for our canoe. I think I found something that everyone can actually agree on. Isn't that amazing? It's really kind of a, a cheap <laughs> shot here because I'm going to say baby chicks are cute. <laughs> we can agree on that, right? Cutest among all of God's creatures, little baby chicks. But baby chicks can also be very difficult to tell apart. And that can be a problem, especially if you raise chickens. I mean, these newly hatched little balls of down <laughs> are often identical in size. They're very uniform in their uh, pigmentation. Uh, really kind of perfect matches with their little round bodies and, and even in their imprinted behaviors, they're almost indistinguishable. Every now and then, however, some baby chick has the misfortune to stand out in some way, whether they have a distinctive uh, dark or a light spot in their feathers, or it may be they're a little smaller than all the rest of the chicks, or, you know, sometimes... Uh, a mishap with a sharp stick or a piece of wire can create a small scratch that becomes a distinguishing mark. In fact, it becomes a distinguishing mark that can become a mark of death <laughs> when the other chicks, despite their adorable, cuddly appearance, begin pitilessly to peck at and, and, and persecute the different chick, sometimes to the point of death, the, the flock mentality of these bird brains can suggest to the flock that any chick that is different must be driven out or must be destroyed. Well, some of us who were the fat kids or the skinny kids or the four-eyed kids or the poor kids or the dumb kids or the slow kids or the short kids or the tall kids, some of us know that bird brains exist in the human community as well. We have a romanticized notion of childhood as an age of innocence but that notion completely ignores how magnificently cruel and vicious human childhood can also be when anyone in the flock you know, is different. Even as adults, there are racial attitudes and bigotries and homophobia and gender bias and economic oppression and a host of more subtle forms of discrimination that can become strangely acceptable, permissible, and even a unifying in a flock mentality. So how curious that the Christian gospel would hold up Jesus 
as the emblem of human emancipation and human salvation. When Jesus was one who was different. Jesus was one who was rejected, uh, maliciously treated, even gruesomely executed. And even more curious is this baptismal proclamation of, of God's utter delight, God's pleasure in Jesus, this same one who would suffer the kind of indignities and persecution that he suffered. If, if such hostile opposition and mistreatment was the experience of Jesus, Jesus with whom God was well pleased, if that was his experience, it seems reasonable to expect that some opposition, some difficulty may be part of our Christian experience as well. To experience God's pleasure is not the same thing as experiencing a life that is all pleasure. As people who share with Jesus in his baptism and who through baptism share a, a common marking by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, this, this strange kind of rule stretching dove power. As those who through baptism share that common marking with Jesus we may find that wearing our baptism, wearing this stamp of God's pleasure can become the distinguishing mark that signals to other members of the human flock attack. <laughs> this one is different. This one is not conforming. This one is not doing what all the rest are doing. Many of us have experienced this to some degree in recent days as we found ourselves defending the faith of Jesus Christ and, and proclaiming the way of, of Jesus Christ in ways that we never would have imagined of ourselves, but the time seems to demand it. Maybe even to our surprise, we're finding that that sharing the baptism of Christ and drinking the cup of this one in whom God is well pleased has somehow mysteriously kind of called us out. It's called us to some of the highest moments of witness, some of the most exhilarating, if not frightening, moments of self Disclosure and vulnerability, maybe more than any other time in our lifetimes. We're standing firm, even in the line of fire, feeling enabled somehow, empowered with this paradoxical kind of, of dove power. Uh, innocent, cooing beautiful, but also chosen as the image of divine power descending on the different one, on the targeted one, descending on the other and, and, and winning the hearts of more and more and more who also see that power descending. Here in this gospel story on the first Sunday after the Epiphany, we, we kind of see the, the expectation of the Advent season slowly give way to an Epiphany courage, a, a, a courage that we need now, courage to 
to stop expecting only, but now to actually achieve what we've expected. Epiphany breaks in with the message that it's time now to count on the Holy Spirit, surprisingly portrayed as a dove, but to count on the Holy Spirit to help us do the works of God, to help us achieve the will of God. Here in this opening scene of Jesus' public ministry, as the baptismal waters drip from his wet hair, the, the rarely heard voice of God breaks into the events of human history. And the voice expresses God's delight. As we come today to reaffirm that we too are baptized. I hope that this may be a moment for us to return in, in sacred memory to the scene of our own baptism. And recognize that it too was an occasion of the rarely heard voice of God breaking into human affairs and declaring God's delight. This is my beloved child with whom I am well pleased. Come and Remember that you are baptized. Rejoice and be thankful in the name of Christ. Amen. Indeed, 
all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jan, for the good word and song today. Um, since the earliest times, the vows of the baptismal covenant have consisted first in the renunciation of all that is evil, and then the profession of faith and loyalty to Christ. So I ask you, will you, by God's grace, continue to turn away from the powers of evil, harm, and injustice? We, we renounce, renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of our sin. Will you allow the Spirit to use you as prophets to speak truth to powers that obscure or oppose God's compassion and grace and deflect God's goodness? We, we accept the freedom and power God gives us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. Will you proclaim the good news and live as disciples of Christ, his body on earth? We confess Jesus Christ as our Savior, put our whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as our Lord, in union with the church, which Christ has opened to all people. Will you be living witnesses to the gospel individually and together, wherever you are, and in all that you do? We will remain faithful members of Christ's holy church, and serve as representatives of Christ in the world. Will you receive and profess the Christian faith to which the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments bear witness? We affirm and teach the faith of the whole church as we put our trust in God, in Jesus the Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is with us. Even so, come Lord, let us pray. Almighty God, the life you birthed in us by baptism into Jesus Christ will never end. Your justice is unfailing. Your mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Your healing river flows. Your spirit, like wind, blows where you will. Wherever we go, Lord, you are there. But sometimes we try to block the flow. We redirect the winds of the Spirit, or we walk so far away from the life-giving stream that we do not hear its sound and we forget its power. We parch ourselves. When we are dry and thirsty, God, you come and refresh us. Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon us. Come upon these waters. Let these waters be to us drops of your mercy. Let these waters remind us of your righteousness. Let these waters renew us in the resurrection power of Jesus. Let these waters make us long for the fulfillment of you. Most holy God, Lord, Jesus Christ, Savior, Lord, glory to you, Spirit of fire, Spirit over the waters, spirit of holiness, glory to you. Eternal God revealed in human flesh, giving life to all of creation. All glory is yours now and forever. Amen. At this time, we invite all of you who wish to, to come forward. You'll come to the font. Simply touch the water. Touch your own forehead. As you do this, you'll hear the words spoken to you. Remember that you are baptized. Rejoice and be thankful. You can respond as you wish. Thanks be to God. Or amen. Or you can kneel and pray or simply return to your seats. But all who wish, come and be reaffirmed. Come and remember that you are baptized. <laughs>
God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Would you stand and let us offer one, one another signs of reconciliation and love? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Please be seated. Let us pray. Come, day spring. Come, wisdom from on high. Fill this place with your light. Fill our hearts with your love. Bless these gifts that we give, that we might be your people for your world. In the name of Christ, amen. Amen. It's never the case that every spiritual moment is always ripe and ready to be harvested, but there are always those things in our lives that are near completion. Our act of uh, faith today would be in the coming week to look at those things that are 
uh, so close that need to be moved from the category of expectation over to the category of achieved. Those things that you've wanted to learn or wanted to finish or that thing for which you wanted to volunteer or to give or to pray for or to, uh, to repair. Those things that we can move in the coming days from that category of expectation over to achieved. Uh, these acts of faith and other commitments of our hearts we offer to God as we sing our hymn of faith. Join together as we sing. Now may you go in the strength of Christ and with the confidence of children of God. May you go with faith, joined to Christ and to one another by baptism. May you serve in Christ's honor, in his spirit and in his name. Amen. Amen.